There's some fun rivalries in this series, like the Sandor brothers, the Mountain and the Hound. But what I'd rather talk about is family rivals, because that's where all the juicy in-depth lore is at. Probably the most iconic of these rivalries is the Starks and Boltons. Their relationship has been turbulent since this story's history. The Starks didn't start off as the rulers of the North. There were kings in every corner of Westeros. The Starks were the most powerful in the North and conquered every other family in this region and formed their own kingdom. The Red Kings of House Bolton were one of these families. It's hard to believe the Boltons are even in the same kingdom as the Starks. The Northerners are generally known to be honest, loyal, and all about honor, but the Boltons are nothing like this. The Kings of Winter and the Red Kings warred for thousands of years and the Boltons had this sick tradition of flaying skin. Flaying is skinning someone alive and even their sigil depicts this kind of torture. They would take things further by wearing a flayed man's skin, including the Starks. In their castle, east of Winterfell, called the Dreadfort, there's rumored to be a room dedicated to just torturing. A couple Red Kings were even able to take and burn Winterfell, in similar fashion to what Ramsay would do thousands of years later. The Boltons would only bend the knee to the Starks when a new enemy came around. The Andals from Essos were conquering Westeros, but the North's defenses were too strong. The peace between the two families wouldn't last long, after the Andals were no longer a threat, the Boltons would rebel. This would become a pattern in the story. The Boltons would rebel, lose to the Starks, bend the knee, and then eventually rebel again. The last time they bent the knee, the Boltons agreed to stop flaying people, but it's likely they continued their sick tradition. And of course, now in the current story, it's Roose Bolton and Ramsay doing all the backstabbing and rebelling against their liege lord. The Starks aren't the only family in the north with an old rivalry. The southernmost lords in the north is House Reed while the northernmost lords in the Riverlands is House Frey. These guys do not get along. And funny enough, a lot of the houses all over the Seven Kingdoms don't like these guys either. House Reed is part of the swamp area in the north called the Neck. The swamp serves as a natural border between the Riverlands and is the reason why the north is so difficult to conquer. The people that live here are called Cronogmen, since the people who don't have very much live on floating islands on the swamps called Cronogs. They're a lot smaller than most people and eat frogs in their culture so some look at this as a reason to bully and insult the Cronog men. The Freys are some of these bullies. House Frey is looked down upon by other great houses because of how quickly they grew rich and powerful and how they did it. They strategically placed a bridge across the river here and charged everyone to cross it. If the Cronog men wanted to travel down south, they would have to pay this toll every time, which would become difficult for a poor group of people. When Hal and Reed wanted to adventure south, where he would meet his good friend Ned Stark for the first time, he decided to travel beneath the bridge, called the twins. His children explained to Bran that he did so at night so the Freys wouldn't attack him. Not long after, however, a Frey squire and attorney would be someone who attacks him. Lyanna Stark had to come to his rescue. A few Freys in the story have called the Chronic Men frog eaters, mud men, thieves, cravens, sneaks who won't fight like decent folks, and who have green teeth from all the frogs they eat. It's even stated that the Freys tried to take the reeds past the grey water, but failed since it's so difficult to fight them in their swamps. The Reeds believe in the old gods like the rest of the Northerners, while the Freys pray to the Seven, so this wouldn't help things. I know I said the Stark Bolton ancient rivalry is the most iconic, but the Targaryen Blackfire one has to be pretty close. This complicated rivalry would turn into five rebellions against the Iron Throne, and countless lives would be lost. About 130 years before the start of the story, a Targaryen king named Aegon the Unworthy ruled over the Seven Kingdoms, and was arguably one of the worst kings of all time. He was as faithful to his sister wife as Robert Baratheon was to Cersei, and would father a bunch of bastards throughout his lifetime. The Targaryens used to have an ancestral Valyrian steel sword called Blackfire, and instead of giving it to his heir Darren, Aegon the Unworthy gave it to one of his bastards, Daemon. There were already rumors of Darren not actually being Aegon's son, and by not passing it on to him, it only fueled these rumors. Daemon would create its own house and sigil afterwards, calling his branch of the family House Blackfire after the Valyrian steel sword. Aegon would really make a mess of things when on his deathbed, he decided to legitimize all of his great bastards that he had with women of noble birth. Daemon Blackfire's mother was Aegon's cousin, so she was also a Targaryen. So people started to look at him as the true heir. Other lords in King's Landing and in the Seven Kingdoms began to hate Daeron for some of the laws he was passing. Dorne was never able to be conquered by the Targaryens until Daeron brought them into the Seven Kingdoms through marriages between the Targaryens and the Martells. A lot of people of Westeros weren't very fond of the Dornishmen and believed Darren was too influenced by them. Daemon remained peaceful with his Targaryen family until one of his half-brothers somehow convinced him to rebel. It was his fellow Targaryen bastard, Aegor Rivers, better known as Bittersteel, who was treated a lot worse than some of his other half-siblings. A lot of houses joined in the Blackfire Rebellion, but would be defeated. 
mainly because of another one of the bastards, Brendan Rivers, aka Blood Raven, aka the Three Eyed Raven. Bittersteel would escape to Essos with Damon's family and his sword so they can return to fight another day, but Damon never survived this first rebellion. The Targaryens would have to deal with four more rebellions in the future. House Blackfire would finally go extinct many years later when Sir Barristan Selmy was able to kill the fifth and last Blackfire trying to make himself king, mainly the monstrous. A lot of fans believe that there is another secret Blackfire currently trying to make himself king in the current book story. I know a lot of you guys probably know who I'm talking about. Bittersteel and Bloodraven may have been half Targaryen from their father's side, but their mothers were from families in the Riverlands with a very deep rivalry. Bittersteel's mother was from House Bracken of Stonehenge, and Bloodraven's mother was from House Blackwood of Raven Tree Hall. The hate they have for each other all comes down to land disputes. Both of these houses were minor kings at one point in the Riverlands, but there are conflicting stories. The Blackwoods claim that Brackens were horse breeders who usurped the crown from them, and the Brackens claim the Blackwoods were vassals who usurped the crown from them. The Blackwoods actually originated from the north. They ruled over a place called the Wolf's Wood before the Starks ran them out when they were conquering. The Blackwoods went south of the Riverlands and made Raventree Hall their home. I believe the Blackwoods are the only house, not in the north, that believe in the old gods. There's been a bunch of battles between these two for which areas belong to who. The Blackwoods believe the Brackens poisoned their weirwood tree, which is something they worship in their religion. This wouldn't be past the Brackens, since they've been written as kind of the bad guys in this feud. They would war, then find peace, and the Brackens would do something dumb to reignite their hate. There was a time the Brackens and Blackwoods were fighting a common enemy, and the Brackens backstabbed them by attacking the Blackwoods from behind. A family member from each of these houses once fought a duel to marry a Targaryen princess, but funny enough she would end up choosing someone else. Another time in the story, a Bracken once killed a Blackwood in an attorney. But the more interesting time of their rivalry was with Bittersteel and Bloodraven. Like I said earlier, Aegon the Unworthy was an unfaithful man, and at one point, he would have a mistress from House Bracken. Her name was Barba Bracken, and her father, Lord Bracken, was a man who became Aegon's Hand of the King. When Aegon's sister wife was in bad shape after giving birth, Lord Bracken tried to make his daughter the next queen. Aegon and Barba did have a bastard together, but her father's ambition went too far and got him removed from King's Landing and sent back to Stonehenge. Aegon's next mistress was Melissa Blackwood. Aegon previously named some of their disputed land Barba's Teats after its old mistress, but would rename it Missy's Teats after his new mistress after he heard that Barba was insulting Melissa's body. He even took these lands from the Brackens and gave them to the Blackwoods. That's just the kind of shitty king he was. Aegon and Melissa would have three bastards, one of them being Brennan Rivers. When Aegon went to Stonehenge to visit his bastard Ego Rivers, he took Barbara Bracken's younger sister as his new mistress. What he didn't know is that Lord Bracken groomed this younger sister to make Aegon fall for her. When he brought her to King's Landing, she would fall in love with one of his king's guard, and that really pissed off the king. Aegon was the one who personally found them in bed together, so he had the king's guard dismembered piece by piece, while the younger sister was forced to watch. Afterwards, she and her father were also killed. Melissa was no longer a mistress but she was loved in King's Landing, so her children were able to be raised at court, while Aegor and the Brackens were humiliated and left behind. It was actually Aegon's son Darren that wanted Barba and Aegor removed, so you can understand why he wanted Daemon Blackfire to rebel against the Targaryens. To add more fire to the feud, Aegor and Brendan would both fall in love with their half-sister Sea Seastar. She never married, but did sleep and spend a lot of time with Brendan. During the first Blackfire Rebellion, they would meet on the battlefield, and Brendan would lose an eye to his larger and stronger brother Biddlesteel. Even before the Blackfire Rebellions, these two families fought on opposite sides during the Targaryen civil war called the Dance of Dragons. Even in the current story, they were fighting each other after the Brackens bent a knee to the Lannisters, while the Blackwoods stayed loyal for a while after Robb Stark's death. Even the Lannisters had a short rivalry out in the Westerlands. A little north of the Lannisters' home Castle Rock is the seat of House Rain called Castamere. There's a lot of similarities between these two families. Both the Lannisters and Reigns descend from First Men and became very wealthy from their gold mines. Even their sigils are pretty similar. Unlike the Starks and Boltons, the relationship between these two families wasn't always bad. The first Lannister king married a Reign and they were part of the Kingdom of the Rock ever since. That was the name the Westerlands had before Seven Kingdoms united. Things turned bad between the families when Alan Reign married into the Lannister family. She was first betrothed to marry the heir but he died on the battlefield so she ended up marrying his twin brother. Alan Rain became very influential at Castle Rock and began strengthening her own family by appointing Reigns to notable positions. Unfortunately for Alan, her Lannister husband would also die on the battlefield before they had any children. She lied and told everyone she was expecting just to stay in Castle Rock as long as she could. 
She even tried to get with Titus Lannister, who was the next lord, but he already had someone else. Titus was this weak lord who was Tywin's and his siblings' father. Ellen then married into the Tarbeck family and began taking advantage of the weak Titus Lannister. House Tarbeck wasn't very rich or powerful, so Ellen began borrowing gold from the Lannisters without repaying them. Titus was a complete pushover, so his up to was more competent on Tywin to do something. Tywin demanded all deaths to the Lannisters be paid immediately, or hostages would be sent to Castle Rock. Ellen's older brother was the Lord of Castamere, and still didn't take the Lannisters seriously, so he told others to ignore these threats. Ellen's Tarbeck husband tried to talk to Titus out of his son's threats, but was imprisoned by Tywin at Castle Rock. Ellen, in return, took three Lannisters as hostages. Titus began to crumble and sent Ellen's husband back home and even forgave the debts they were owed. Tywin didn't stop persisting and wanted what his family was owed, so the Tarbacks and Reigns rose in rebellion. Without informing his father, Tywin marched with an army and surprised the Tarbacks. They were crushed with Ellen and the Tarbacks being killed making the family go extinct. Their home was also burned to the ground. Before Ellen's death, she claimed her brothers were coming. The Reigns have always been called the Red Lions, and Ellen said their claws are just as long and sharp as the Golden Lions. She was wrong, however. The Reigns showed up a little late to the fight and were also crushed. Some were able to run back to Castamere, where Tywin will permanently finish them off. They were hiding deep within the mines, so Tywin decided to block off all entrances and drown everyone inside with water. Not a single person made it out, and Castamere was also burned. A song called The Reigns of Castamere was written to remember this event and used to threaten Lannister enemies like they did at the Red Wedding. I don't know if I'll consider these last few as rivalries, but there is definitely some tension between these families. Before the Martells ruled Dorne, most of the region was under House Ironwood. They called themselves the High Kings of Dorne, but there were some other kings here. When Nymeria sailed her way to Dorne with all the Rhoynar under her, she combined forces with the Martells, and after years of hard battles, the Ironwoods and everyone else bent the knee. They're still the second most powerful house here, and while the Martells were very close with the Targaryens at the time of the Blackfyre rebellions, the Ironwoods sided with House Blackfyre probably because they knew they would be rewarded with Dorne if they were successful. But many years later, it would be Oberyn to set off this feud again. When Oberyn Martell was 16, he was found in bed with Lord Ironwood's mistress. This led to them fighting a duel to first blood. But Lord Ironwood's wounds would get infected and end up killing him. People believed Oberyn was fighting with a poison blade like he is known to do, so he left Dorne in exile. This is actually how he got his nickname of the Red Viper. Oberyn's older brother was always the more cautious one of the two. So Duran Martell sent his oldest son to stay with the Ironwoods as a way of repaying a blood debt. It doesn't seem like much, but if one day his son would become a Prince of Dorne, it would be very beneficial for the Ironwoods having been so close to him. This will never happen of course, since he was roasted by Daenerys' dragon in the last book. The last rivals are House Dane and House Oakhart. I wasn't going to mention this one because of how little information we have about it, but I just love talking about the Danes because of how interesting they are. Dorne has pretty much always been in constant war with the neighboring kingdoms, the Stormlands and the Reach. House Dane, being so close to the border of the Reach, has fought in a lot of battles. And on the other side, the Oakharts of the Reach have fought a lot of battles against Dorne. In the current book story, Gerald Dane and Eris Oakhart come into contact with one another, and Gerald mentions before they meet that Danes have been killing Oakharts for thousands of years. And the next line of the chapter is Oakharts have been killing Danes for just as long. Gerald also says that they have their family traditions. But that's all we get from this rivalry. If you guys think I miss any, or have any rival theories of your own, I, along with some others, would love reading them in the comments. If you haven't seen my Dothraki Sea video, I'll have it up so you can click or tap on your screen to watch it. And I'll see you guys next week with something else to talk about. Thanks for watching.